What's up everybody? Today we're talking Photoshop. Content aware fill, clone stamp tool, spot healing brush, and much more. So smile big for the camera and let's get into it. Okay, so our goal in this photo restoration project is to go from this image of four scanned photos to this image of our finalized photo restored um, picture. So we're taking one of these images and we're going to kind of make some edits, get rid of the text in here, edit out the, the sides here so that it actually doesn't look torn like it was out of a um, scrapbook, and just kind of do a little minor editing in here to get rid of some of the damage that was done to the original image. To start this project, we have to open up the old photo scans PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. We're going to go to File, Open, and find that old photo scan.png and open that up. All right, so whenever we start in Photoshop, I want to go ahead and reset our, my workspace and I want to reset my tools. This helps us all start on the same page so that no one has any presets or settings that might mess you up that yours might look different than mine. So to reset our tools up here at the toolbar, it doesn't matter what tool you have selected. Um, the tool that you have selected will be in this top menu. You're going to right click and reset all tools and just click OK. Then we're also going to reset our workspace. So under Window, Workspace, we're going to go down. Make sure you are on Essentials. If you do not have that checked, you want to make sure that is checked. And Reset Essentials. And that's just going to make sure that all of our panels look the same so that when I'm referring to the Layers panel, yours is going to be in the same area as mine. All right. Next, we're going to um, use our Crop Tool. This is the fifth tool down on the toolbar over here. So we look over here, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like that. Um, we're going to do like a rough crop to start with. So it doesn't need to be perfect. I just want to get it so that we're only focused on this top right hand image. So you'll notice that when I click on the crop tool, I have these um, the like white corners and um, bars in the middle that help us navigate to where we want to crop to. So I'm going to click on one of those corners and drag it up and just make it like I said, this is a rough crop. I'm not trying to get it exactly on the picture. I just wanted to get it around this one image. So we're only focused on that one image. Now, whenever you're using the crop tool, you need to confirm with Photoshop that that is what you actually want to crop. And so you can do that one of two ways. You can either go up here to the top menu and check the checkbox, or you can press enter on your keyboard. Either one will commit that crop and it will um, tell Photoshop that that is what you actually meant to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that checkbox. And now we've got our image right here. I'm going to, just so it's a little bit easier for us to see what's going on here, I'm going to go up to View, and I'm going to do Fit Layers on Screen, and that's just going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're working with here. Okay, so um, first thing I want to do is I want to fix up these corners. So I've got, um, basically this was torn out of a scrapbook, so it's got those little corner scrapbooking things in there. Um, one corner looks like it was a little torn, um, but I want to fix those so that you can't see them. It looks like it's original picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a selection tool, and there's lots of different selection tools you could choose from. You could do the polygonal lasso tool and make straight lines around the edge here, and we just want to get like one of the corners selected. You could use the lasso tool and hand draw a selection around there. So you get these like little dotted lines, that's your selection. Um, so lots of different ways that you can select this area. The magnetic lasso tool doesn't really make sense here, neither does um, our uh, object select or quick select our magic wand. None of those really make sense to make the selection here. So I'm gonna just stick with my lasso tool. So with that lasso tool, all I did was click and drag my mouse around that shape to hand draw the selection of the area that I wanted. Notice that I only have one layer over here. That's my background layer, which is the image that I opened up. So I don't have to worry about what layer I'm on as far as what is selected. I only have that one layer. All right, so with that left top corner selected, we're going to go ahead and use the content aware fill. So the easiest way to do that is while you have it selected and you have any of your selection tools uh, are um, being used, you can right click inside the image and go to fill. 
when you click on fill this box will pop up and you can change it so that you're filling it with a foreground color background color pattern all these different options but we're going to do content aware so what's going to happen there is photoshop is going to try to guess what was supposed to happen in this area this is a great tool to use when you're editing any kind of photos if there's something small in the image that needs to be replaced or got rid of um, it's a really really good tool to have Photoshop use its intelligence to try to guess what was supposed to happen there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that it did a pretty good job here. It's not perfect. There's a little um, kind of mistake there in the corner, but it did a pretty good job of understanding what was supposed to happen in this in this corner image. I'm going to repeat the same process on all three of the rest of the corners. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and just drag a line with my mouse all the way around. Got that area selected, right click, fill, make sure it says content aware here in the drop down menu and then click OK. Once again, it did a pretty good job, not perfect. We're going to fix that up in our next step, but it's pretty good. Same thing down here, selecting around. Oh, if you ever mess up, it's no big deal. If you um, have like a bad selection there and you want to deselect it to start over again, you can either just click somewhere outside of the box to deselect it, or you could go to select, deselect. I don't have anything selected right now, so it's not letting me deselect. Or you could do Command D or Control D on your keyboard to deselect. So I'm going to go ahead and redo my little circle around here. That's definitely not a circle, but a shape, a hand-drawn shape around my corner here. And now that it is selected, right-click, fill, and we're going to do content aware and click OK. Perfect. That, that one actually looks really good. That's the best one I've seen as far as Photoshop trying to guess what was going there. Do the last corner. My lasso tool. Right click, fill, content aware, and then click OK. Ooh, that one's a hot mess over there, but we're going to fix it up in the next step. So that's OK. All right. So once again, once you have a selection and you want to get off of that selection so that it is no longer what is being edited, you can either um, click anywhere outside of the um, the canvas in the gray area. You can go to select, deselect, or you can do the keyboard shortcut, which on a Windows computer is Control D and on a Mac computer is Command D. So I'm going to go and click on deselect and you can see my little dotted line disappears. So I have no selection now. Okay, so like I said, we're going to fix up those, um, those corners. Now I did a pretty good job. Um, that one looks really great, but the, these, these three definitely need some work. So the tool that we're going to use it's called the clone stamp tool and it does exactly what it sounds like. So if we go over here, it looks like um, a little stamper almost clone stamp tool. If you click on that, basically what we're going to do is we're going to choose an area on the image and then clone it to where we want it to go. So, for example, in this corner, I like like this edge of the photo. I'm going to clone that so that it goes over here to this corner. I'm going to zoom in on my workspace up here up at the top so you guys can see this a little bit closer. All right, so once again, I've got the clone stamp tool. The way that you select the area that you're going to clone from is by holding down the Alt key. And when you see, when you hold down the Alt key, when you have that clone stamp tool selected, it changes the way that it looks so that it is a, um, I guess a cross here is what you would call it. Um, so that's where we're, we're choosing the target of where we're getting our information from for the photo. So I'm going to choose right here on this line. I just clicked once, let go of my Alt key. And now you'll notice that when I have my brush dragged around, it shows me where it's cloning it from. It's cloning it from that area that I clicked on. So I can line up that line over here right on the edge where I want it. And I'm just going to draw across here. I haven't clicked yet, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to draw a line right across here to get that, that edge that we're cloning from this part of our image. As always, just real quick, whenever you're using any tool that has a brush attached to it, you can adjust the brush up here. You can change the size of it or the hardness of it. And remember that the hardness is how, um, how, how it's faded around the edge. So the least hard it is, is more faded. The higher it is, it's like a solid outside line. I'm going to keep it on the default settings here, um, but then I just wanted you guys to know that so you can change it when you are using any tool that has the brush attached to it. 
All right, so I'm going to, I've already clicked Alt and I selected the area that I'm cloning from. I'm going to just click and drag a little bit and get that little corner piece done right there. All right, and you may have to play around with it. This one, this clone tool, the clone stamp tool in, um, and one of the other tools that we're going to be using later on, it's really an art form. You kind of have to play around with it. Make sure that you're not going too far. Um, if you need to do Command Z or Control Z to undo, you can do that. So if I went a little bit too far here, I could definitely do Control Z and undo that. No big deal. All right. So once again, that is the, the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool again. I'm going to choose a different area to clone. So I'm clicking on that alt key on my keyboard. So it turns into a crosshair and I click somewhere up here in this white. And what I want to do is I just want to get rid of that little extra spot up there of color that I don't want. So I'm just going to click right there and then I'm going to um, do the same thing down here. So I'm going to click on the alt key to clone this spot right here, this line. And then I'm going to bring it over here and get a nice sharp corner for that edge. Same thing. I'm going to clone stamp down here and get a nice sharp corner for that edge. All right, so this looks a lot better. We got our corner of our image. I'm going to zoom back out again. And you can see that now we have a nice good corner here. And we need to work on this down here and this corner up here. So I'm going to zoom in on this one now. I'm doing the same process over and over again. This is just using the clone stamp tool. So hold down the Alt key, get that crosshair of where I'm, I'm cloning from, and then drawing the line. I'm going to get my alt key again, choose my target area, clean that up a little bit. And then I'm going to actually take my, my brush, my brush stroke or my brush size down a little bit. There's another little, uh, shortcut I want to teach you guys. Whenever you're using that brush tool, you, like I said, you can change the size of it up here, but a little shortcut that might save you some time is on your keyboard, the left and right bracket. Um, on a usual normal keyboard, those are the buttons to the right of the P letter. The, the left bracket will make your brush smaller. So I'm going to press it a couple times. You can see my brush size went down. If I click on the right bracket, that's going to make it bigger. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I want to fix up that one little dot right there. I'm going to click on the Alt key to select the area I'm cloning from and then clicking on that, that spot that needed to be fixed. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and zoom out and go back down to the bottom part and start doing the exact same process down here. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's not a big deal. We can figure out how to do it. So I'm going to take my brush strike up a little bit to this size. I use the right bracket key to increase my brush size. Remember, left bracket goes down, right bracket goes up. I'm going to choose the alt arrow to get my target area right there, and then I can draw my line down. All right, um, I need to get rid of all this e extra space over here that we didn't need. So I'm going to use my alt key in this white area and just paint right on over that. You can see while I'm using the clone stamp, it has a little crosshair of where my target is. So if you ever get confused on, you know, where it's getting the information from, um, you definitely have a, a good source in Photoshop. It's, it's telling you exactly where you're getting that information from. All right, so there's some kind of like distortion here. It's not as clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my alt key and get this area right here and kind of go from the cleaner spot and kind of clean this up a little bit. Once again, this is a little bit of an art form. You kind of have to play around with it to get exactly what you want. But it's not hard. It's just figuring out where you want to get your source information from and where it needs to go. I made my brush stroke a lot smaller here. I'm going to get this, this white area of the picture. I use that as my target area to clean up a little bit over here. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, I'm zooming out. I think I've got my corners pretty well done. And so now I can start working on my next item to, to restore this photo. Um, real quick, I wanted to show you anytime you're using the brush tool, another quick tip or a, a pro tip that might help you get things done a little faster. If you want to draw a straight line at any point, if you click once with a brush 
hold down the shift key and then click the end point, it will connect the two dots. So I want to show you real quick what that looks like. So down here at the bottom, we have like this part right here that's got like a little bit of a, a, a gray hint on that white area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, turn my brush stroke up a little bit. I'm going to use the alt key to get my target area right here since this part looks nice and crisp. And then I'm going to click once right here to start my edit. Hold down the shift key and then click over here to, to make my second point to connect. And you'll notice that it, it drew a line straight from there to there. Now, it gave me a little bit of um, error problem here because it was copying this part of the gene material. Um, so it doesn't look too good. I'm going to undo that, actually. But you can see that that's how you can edit up some areas. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get just some of this plain um, white area. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Click once and then hold down shift twice. And you can see it did a straight line. It connected those two areas. All right, so that's um, a good way anytime you're using the brush tool to make, create a straight line. All right, the next tool that we're going to use is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Spot Healing Brush. And it looks like a Band-Aid with like a little um, dotted circle behind it. It says Spot Healing Brush Tool. This is a great tool for any time you're doing any kind of photo editing. Phot photographers love it. Um, I know a lot of my students love to use it on their photos. It's great for making your face look maybe a little bit um, smoother or if there's any kind of blemishes and stuff like that, it helps out. But it also works in other parts of your images. So what it does is it's kind of like that content fill that um, Photoshop just looks around the image, around the mistake, and tries to guess what needs to go there. So I'm going to zoom in on this little damaged area of the photo in the background. And with our spot healing brush tool, I'm just going to click once. And this is really where your like the art part of this project comes in, is you have to learn how to use the the spot healing tool by, by playing around with it. So part of this image is damaged up here. You can click just dots or you can draw lines. It gets a little funky sometimes when you start to draw the lines. So for example, I'm going to show you where the word, um, the name is written on this picture. If I just draw over this whole thing to try to spot heal that whole thing, sometimes it works and sometimes it will do something funky like that. So I'm going to undo that. If I do part of it, it might work a little bit better. Um, sometimes it will it will do a really good job and sometimes it will mess you up. So you kind of have to play around with it. I always suggest doing smaller pieces so that Photoshop can guess what's supposed to be there by what's around it. Um, so once again, I'm just trying to get rid of all the words on here on this shirt. And that looks pretty good. So spot heal that. There's a little damaged area on his face right here and right there. Clean up a little bit of these dots. I'm going to go down. This is damaged on the, um, the overalls. So again, anytime you're using the, the brush tool inside of a tool, you can change the size and hardness here. I'm going to use my short keyboard shortcut to make my brush smaller. So that's the left bracket. And just kind of fix up these areas. I'm clicking and letting go. I'm not doing a lot of lines here. I'm going to do a little bit of a line here. There we go. There we go. looks like Photoshop did a pretty good job of guessing what was supposed to be there. All right, I've got a lot of my little dots and areas fixed up. You can see that this is a little bit a lighter area over here. The, the color is not the same as the jacket over here. So I'm going to see what that looks like when I fix that up there. Just trying to get it look a little bit more uniform color wise. Looks like there might be like a little bit of a fold in the picture. So I'm just selecting different areas here that I see a change. All right, it's going up. That all looks pretty good. Some light areas of damage on the picture all the way around there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the spot healing brush tool. I'm zooming out. It's already looking significantly better. Okay, so we used the spot healing brush tool. We cleaned up some of the imperfections throughout the image, the little dots in the background, the spots on his overalls, the spots on his face, and the handwriting that was on the picture. All right, so now what we're going to do is some adjustment layers. This is going to let us adjust the brightness, the contrast, do some um, saturation adjustments, um, basically just trying to get this to look more um, 
more updated and a cleaner photo. So our adjustment layers, we have to go over to window and then adjustments, and that's going to open up a new panel for us. And it's right here. So add an adjustment. If you hover your mouse over each one of these, it'll tell you what it is. First, what we're going to do is some brightness and contrast. Now you can manually adjust the brightness and the contrast um, as much as you want, but it might be more beneficial to click on the auto button and that will like met, let Photoshop decide what they think is the best brightness and contrast for this photo. You can see my computer syncing and it's got, it came up with what it thinks is the best brightness and contrast. All right. So Notice in my layers over here, it added a brightness and contrast adjustment layer on top of my background image. So everything below this adjustment layer is being affected by the brightness and contrast. One of the best things about doing your adjustments like this, your color adjustments, anything like that, is that it's non-destructive editing. What that means is that we have adjusted the brightness and contrast, but we can always change it later or go back to the original image. Several ways to do that. So I'm still in this area where I can adjust the brightness and contrast. Let's say that I made it way too bright. I can go click on this button right here, which will revert it to its original state. So if I go back there, it goes back to its original state. Or once again, I'm going to mess up on purpose here, do some kind of really bad contrast like that. This button right here, it's like an eyeball at the bottom of our properties of our adjustment layer here. It will let you click on it and hold it and you can see what it looked like before. So if you're like, mm, not sure if that's exactly where I want it, it was better before, you can click on that auto button. And actually that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the auto button so that Photoshop will automatically um, choose the brightness and contrast again. And then I can click on that, um, the eyeball with the arrow, which is the previous state button. And I can see that's what it looked like originally. And that's what it looks like with the edit. So that's a really cool way of seeing what happened. Now, if I am done with this photo and I decide that I did not like the brightness and contrast later on, I can always turn off the layer in the layers menu and that will take it back to the original and that will no longer be affecting our image. So really good way to non-destructively edit this photo so that you can always go back and change it later. Another adjustment I want to add on is I want to go to the hue saturation and take this saturation bar all the way down so it is actually black and white. It is no longer this um, interesting like sapia -ish color that we scanned in originally from the photo. So once again this was the original photo and now it's black and white. Okay so we've got our adjustment layers, we got our hue saturation layer, our brightness contrast layer, and our original image that we edited up. And now we're going to do a final crop. And so we want to get this exactly on our image. So first thing, I'm going to click on that crop tool. And we're going to use the straighten um, tool within the crop to make sure that it is perfectly straight with this line. So you click on the word straighten. And what it does is it makes like a level for you. So you're just going to click and drag a line. And that's going to tell you what is a, like the straight line, the horizontal line. And so I'm, I'm just clicking along the top of our picture here let go and it it rotated the image so that that top line is now perfectly straight and then I can use my crop tool again to kind of get my corners right to my image right there and one more time on this corner I do want to point out that while you're using the crop tool, the rule of thirds grid comes up for you. It's a great way for you to kind of um, judge your picture and decide if it's fitting into the rule of thirds well. Um, for this image, it's a portrait and it's kind of, it's taking the eyes and putting them close to the, the rule of thirds corner um, intersections. Oops, control Z. And so that will um, kind of show you where you want the, the subject of your image to be. Once again, when you're using the crop, air, crop tool, you have to make sure that you either click the check mark or the enter on your keyboard. I'm going to do enter on my keyboard this time. And now it's confirmed that that is what I wanted to do. All right, finally, we need to save this and export it so that we have our PNG file. So first I'm going to save it. We'll go to file, save as, and we're going to name it, save on my computer. We're going to do it. Our last name first initial underscore photo 
restore one. And obviously you would actually type in your last name and your first initial. I'm just doing last name, first initial so that you guys can see the format for saving it. Save it as a PSD. We're going to click on save. Your Photoshop format options box might pop up. Just click OK. And then we need to export it as a PNG. So we're going to go to file, click export as PNG. It has the same name as our Photoshop file, which is great. And then you're going to click save. Now you have a PNG and a Photoshop file of that photo restoration project. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy creating.